In this video, we're talking about continuity, and more specifically, we're talking about how to find the value of some constant in your piecewise defined function that makes the function continuous. So let's talk about what we mean. We've been given this function f of x, and normally we're given a function f of x, and it's just in terms of x. We have some expression on the right-hand side that's in terms of x, but in this case, We've been given two expressions, so we have c squared minus x squared, and then separately we have 2 times the quantity x minus c squared. So this is called a piecewise defined function because there are two pieces that define the function in a different interval. So this c squared minus x squared defines the function for x less than 0, whereas this second expression defines the function for x greater than or equal to 0. So there's a different expression that defines the function for a different interval, and what we want to do is find the value of c that sort of connects these two functions and makes the function continuous. So let's visualize a different example so that we can understand what we're talking about. If we had, for example, an xy coordinate system, so let's just draw our axes here, and we called this y equals 1, and we called this y equals 2 right here, and then we have some function, and let's say our function looks like this, something like this. Okay, so this would be a piecewise defined function. And what we would say for this function is that f of x would be equal to, and we can see that the line y equals 2, this line on the left here, so y equals 2, defines the function for x less than 0. Whereas the line y equals 1, this line right here, y equals 1, defines the function for x greater than 0. And we're not necessarily sure what the value of the function is at x equals 0, because the value of the function could be 2 at x equals 0, or it could be 1 at x equals 0. So if it were 2, we would put the less than or equal to sign here. If it were 1, we would put the greater than or equal to sign with this second inequality here. But either way, this would be a piecewise defined function because we have two different expressions that define the function in two different intervals. And what we need to realize here is that the break happens at x equals 0. So to the left of x equals 0, the function is defined by the equation y equals 2. But then at x equals 0 is when we have the break, and from that point on, the function is defined by the line y equals 1. So the break is happening at x equals 0. Well, that's the same for the problem we've been given. The break is happening at x equals 0, and we can tell that because of the inequalities we've been given. This first expression defines the function for x less than 0, and for x greater than or equal to 0, the function is defined by this expression. So we know that the break is happening at x equals 0, and that's really important because the way we're going to solve this problem is we're going to plug in 0 for x to reduce the piecewise defined function so that it's only in terms of c, not in terms of x. So the first thing we want to do is identify where the break is occurring, and we can tell that by looking at the inequality. So that's at x equals 0. So now we're going to plug x equals 0 into the function. So we're going to say f of x is going to be equal to, and then we're going to have two separate pieces just like in the original problem. We're going to plug in x equals 0. So we're going to get c squared minus 0 squared. And here we're going to get 2 times the quantity 0 minus c squared. And so if we simplify these, 0 squared is obviously just 0. c squared minus 0 leads us to c squared. So this becomes c squared. Here, 0 minus c is a negative c. Negative c quantity squared is a positive c squared. So this is just going to become 2c squared. Now the whole idea is that depending on the value of c, these two expressions are going to be different. We want to find the value of c that makes the function continuous, which means the value of c that makes these two expressions meet up at the same value when x is equal to 0. So because we're trying to get them to meet up at x equals 0, we plug in x equals 0, and then we want to set these equal to each other so that they're meeting up at the same value. So we just say c squared equal to 2c squared, and now we want to solve for c. So if we subtract c squared from both sides, so we're going to subtract c squared from both sides. On the left hand side, c squared minus c squared gives us 0. On the right hand side, 2c squared minus c squared gives us 1c squared, or just c squared. So then if we take the square root of both sides, we can see that c is going to be equal to 0. Therefore, the value of c that makes the function continuous is c equals 0. Now remember that in order for the function to be continuous, the definition of continuity tells us that the left-hand limit must exist, 
the right hand limit must exist and those limits must be equal to one another. So we found that the value of c that makes the function continuous is c equals zero. But we need to verify for the purpose of proving continuity of the function at c equals zero, we need to verify that the left and right hand limits both exist and that the value of those limits are equal. So in the same way that we plugged in x equals zero to reduce the function so that it was just in terms of c, now we're going to plug in c equals zero to reduce the function so that it's only in terms of x. So then the function is going to become f of x is equal to, and again we're going to have our two pieces here, so if c equals zero we're going to get zero squared minus x squared, and then we're going to get two times the quantity x minus zero quantity squared. So then if we simplify here, what we're going to get is 0 squared is 0, 0 minus x squared just becomes negative x squared. Here we have x minus 0, so that's x. x squared, we get x squared times 2, so this becomes 2x squared. Now remember the break is happening at x equals 0, and we know that negative x squared defines the function to the left of x equals 0. 2x squared defines the function to the right of x equals 0, because this negative x squared is for x less than 0, this 2x squared is for x greater than or equal to 0. So what we want to do to prove the limit, we need to show that the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side of negative x squared that's going to be equal to zero. We also need to show that the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of 2x squared exists and is equal to zero. Now solving these limit problems won't always be as easy as it is in this particular example, but fortunately for these limits we can just use substitution. So if we approach zero from the negative side, we can just plug zero in for x and what we end up with is negative zero squared. Well of course that's just zero. Same thing here, we can use substitution. We plug in x equals 0 and we get 2 times 0 squared. Well that of course is also just going to be 0. And even if you wanted to show that values that were very close to 0 on the left hand side like negative 0.001, negative 0.0001, if you wanted to plug those values in for x, we would see that as we got closer and closer to 0 on the left hand side or the negative side, we would get closer and closer to the value y equals 0. And same thing here, if you wanted to take values that were very close to 0, but on the right hand or positive side, you could take values like 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, 0 .0001, and as you got closer and closer to 0, you would see that the value for y got closer and closer to 0. So that's how we show that both limits exist, and because both limits exist, and the values are equal to one another, right? We got zero here, and we got zero here, and those values are equal. Because those values are equal, that proves that the function is continuous. And if we wanted to, we could even graph this function to show the continuity. So what we would do is we would have our x, y, coordinate plane here, and we can take this first expression. So for x less than 0, the function is defined by negative x squared. So if we take x equal to 0 and we plug that in, we're going to get 0 squared, which is 0, negative 0, that's still just 0. So let's graph this first one in orange here, so we get a value here of 0. If we take x equal to negative 1, we get negative 1 quantity squared as a positive 1, but then we apply that negative sign in front and we get negative 1. So if if we draw in some values here, like this, then we can say when x is negative 1, y is negative 1, so we get this point right here. When x is negative 2, we get negative 2 quantity squared as a positive 4, but then we apply that negative sign, so we get a negative 4, so we get the point negative 2, negative 4, which should be about right here. So we can see that when x is less than 0, the function is defined by a curve that looks something like this, it's this parabola that opens down. For x greater than or equal to 0, the function is defined by 2x squared, this expression here. So if we plug in some points and we'll plot this in green, if we plug in x equals 0, we're going to get 0 squared, which is 0, times 2, which is still 0, so we get this value here. If we plug in x equals 1, we get 1 squared, which is 1, times 2 is 2, so we get the point here, 1, 2. If we plug in x equals 2, we get 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, so we'll get 2 and then 8, so it'll be somewhere, let's say, way up here. So we're going to get then this parabola that opens steeply up, like this, 
and we can see that the function is continuous at x equals 0, the breakpoint. So that was the whole point of solving for the value of c. We said that if c equals 0, then what we end up with is negative x squared and 2x squared. And with these two expressions, at the value x equals 0, at this line here, x equals 0, then the value of both of these functions is 0 here at the origin. So they meet up with one another at the value x equals 0, and therefore the function becomes continuous because they sort of meet in the middle here. So that's what we were trying to do, is solve for the value of c that made the function continuous. Once we found it, we reduced the function so that both expressions were in terms of x only, and then we prove that the function is continuous by showing that the left-hand limit exists, the limit exists as we approach here from the left hand hand side, that the right hand limit exists, so the right hand limit as we approach here from the right hand side, that both of those limits exist, and that the values of both limits are equal to one another. So the value of those limits at the breakpoint at x equals 0 are equal to one another, and that's how you find the value of c that makes the function continuous.